As you guys know, I'm facing felony menacing charges, so I thought it'd be interesting to go through my case file and see what all is in here. So, first of all, non-PDF files, oh, local photo. It's not opening. There's evidence of me leaving a note, which I confess to automatically. Cool. There's me, and I look bad, and that is something you should know about if you're ever in this situation, if you're, and you're going to, going to be arrested, get a haircut before you get arrested. There's the note, which says, please do not walk outside, stare at me, reach for your waistband twice like you're going to pull a gun, and then taunt me with a Magnum shooting center shirt. I'm concerned that I will kill you. You scare me. I have a concealed carry permit. Please be careful. And then I signed it, uh, and then I said, please never talk to me again. All right, so um, this was response to a threat, and that is my defense in my case, is that he threatened me, and I warned him. I said, don't do that. Don't threaten to kill me. Don't scare me like that. Um, and now they're saying that I threatened him and that I'm mentally ill. My defense is that um, <clears throat> he had a reason to threaten me. In their notes, they say that I actually um, threatened him for no reason. So, um, like, I, 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 I am just a mentally ill person that decided to scare my neighbor. So I was menacing him. That's what they're saying. Um, my gun was analyzed. There's a crime report. Um, it's a, it's a Sig Sauer and, um, yeah, it just says that, like, it says that it was cocked and everything. So, <clears throat> so the DA is, a uh, deputy DA is John Purcell and he interviewed my mom, but oh, he, he tried to, um, she stated that her son had gone to court with a lawyer and that he is suffering from delusional thinking. Mary stated that John has, has not been diagnosed, but we, not fully identifying who we are, had gone to a psychologi psychologist to talk about John. Mary stated, the psychologist stated she needed to call the DA and let them know what is going on with her son. Mary stated her son is not a normal person. Yeah, I'm not a normal person. So that's their whole case is my mom thinks I'm mentally ill, I guess, is the way that they're framing it. But when my mom goes to court, she's just going to confirm my stories and then she's going to not answer his questions at all. I told her, just don't talk. <clears throat> Um, so, so understand, cause he, he thinks that I am not capable of understanding and making decisions regarding plea offers and other questions related to my ability to understand and make decisions regarding the criminal case because I'm mentally ill. Um, my mom didn't call him back again. He keeps calling my mom over and over again and she doesn't answer the phone. But the one time she says, okay, so here it is. Um, there are pictures taken by James Lambert. James Lambert is the retired DEA agent who um, threatened me and the evidence disappeared. There's two handgun mags plus one round of ammo and there's a gun, another evidence report. All right, so uh, over and over again, he has not been diagnosed, he's not a normal person, I'm not. I um, worked for the CTO of the NSA and they wouldn't call to confirm my story because they were saying I was mentally ill and there were two different cops that didn't confirm it and that's the big reason that the second piece of evidence disappeared because I was emphatic and I'm gonna look in this thing and I'm gonna see if, or look in this police report and see if there's any mention of my boss's name, which I tried to give to James Lambert while he, he but, but the problem is his, his body cam footage disappeared. All right, so. So can, can you contact my boss with the military police to make sure that it's clear that I was working for the NSA? Because if you need evidence to figure out if, if why I would be in this situation, wouldn't you want to contact a high up military police person? Um, potentially, we could. Your your employment in this in this matter. If a CIA person is threatening me, you're saying it doesn't matter to you. It's not are about. You, are you a, are you an actual cop? Well, That's what I'm wondering. Is are you a cop or are you like that guy? Well, John. This is our first time meeting, so I know I'm that you saying if you don't want to contact the military police to see if I was working for the NSA and see if I actually caught the NSA hacking me, 
and okay. see if there's a reason that a CIA guy would be doing that. Okay. Then what I'm saying is, are you actually a cop? No, I get, I get the connection that you I don't know what this is. Okay, so, oh, it's call history. Um, all right, there's more evidence showing that I call, that, that this, all, all this happened. I, I, they're going to work really hard making sure that, to confirm that I sent this note, which obviously I, like, wasn't lying, like, I wasn't, I'm not, I, I've been completely transparent. He threatened me, and they won't even try to confirm my story because he's a dirty cop, and now he's deleted evidence. All right, so, combined criminal history, I have no criminal history. Um, the only criminal history is compulsory insurance, owned uninsured motor vehicle, and I didn't go to court because Someone dropped me off in the middle of the forest in Washington and left me there because they got arrested. Uh, and that's how I ended up um, in my, that, that story about the stolen car in Las Vegas. Yeah, uh, that's why I missed court. So the only time I missed court is because what happened is I was in the hospital and that's how, why I didn't take care of my insurance problem because I missed court for that reason. And then I got put in jail and for, because I missed court because I was in the hospital because I had appendicitis and then um, I, I bailed myself out of jail and then, and then they left me in the forest so I missed court again but then yeah so that's what happened alright so arrest report from okay alright so I'm still going through this because I figure you guys might like this this is all the evidence they have alright um, at approximately 1052 hours I contacted the victim Jason Mitchell via telephone to advise him of my assignment in the case he had nothing else to add he was going to send me a copy of the note left okay that's it um, keeps going all right approving supervisor Roy Ditzler reporting officer Daniel Summy all right so as part of my duties as an intelligence detective, I routinely work with the federal, state, and local agencies in the Colorado Springs metro area to perform blah, blah, blah. So this is a detective. He's concerned about Paul Nakasone, me talking about Paul Nakasone, the guy that's in charge of the NSA. And he says, at 510 mark of the video, Mr. Mormon states, I haven't decided if he needs to hang by the neck. He probably does. At 825 mark Mr. Mormon says I think we're going to kill a lot of people at the NSA because of them covering up like I, okay so has everyone seen the evidence that um, they changed the timestamps in my Facebook messages to hide that I did a hunger strike to hide what all the government's been doing that's that's solid concrete evidence I double checked and made sure this girl was from the Bible study that I came out to about the drug trafficking. Like I went to the NSA guys, I pulled out a piece of paper, I drew a diagram and I said, uh, this is how much the economy depends on drugs. This trip in November was for that church specifically. This ugly Christmas sweater was for that church specifically. That's December, that's months later. I mean, you have to understand, when you come out as a drug dealer to your entire Bible study, it's kind of awkward after when they've known you for months. November 2012. Hadn't come out, I guarantee it. I remember this trip, I was comfortable with everyone. This trip was awesome. Imagine that you went to your Bible study, all your friends, and said, I'm the biggest drug dealer in the world, and you're talking to the NSA people, and everyone's sitting there going, wait, that's why they're here? You wouldn't come back to Bible study. And you've also probably seen the evidence that I had negative one SoundCloud listens, which is, like, how, do I, how can you have negative listens? Obviously, someone's tampering with this sort of thing. I feel like this needs to be reiterated. So I had 962 total plays, like, I have a bunch of songs, but I had 962 plays total. At the same time, I had 482 followers. But if I had listened to my friend's music on SoundCloud, I would have not joined SoundCloud, I would have just listened to it. When a guy has 2,000 Facebook followers because he was an orientation leader and a Welcome Week leader and he's friends with everybody in the freaking school, they tend to listen to his music, at least to try at least one song. But I had done a hunger strike. Robert Mueller got fired. The FBI is a bunch of big truck driving people. So is the military. Pisses me off every time I hang out with a military person. Big ass truck. So they're clearly violating the Constitution. 
and there's a judge that's allowing them to do this. But it's not just that, it's that I'm very certain that the Austin Bomber confession doesn't exist because I caught the Austin Bomber while I was working for the CTO of the NSA. Like him, he was with another guy. The other guy wanted to start a civil war. That's what he said. He said the blood of, the soil of freedom needs to be fertilized with the blood of patriots. So I know that. And I said, if you, we're gonna put you on trial, we're gonna convict you, and you guys all think you have to be, you have to be secret keepers because you're from the NSA, but really you're constitution breakers and you're violating the Constitution, you're violating your oath to defend the Constitution, and you're also um, murdering people, and you're also framing people, and it's not right, so all I'm saying is, yeah, of course, um, you're gonna hang by the neck, which is uh, something you do to traitors. And I said I haven't decided, because I don't know if he's actually a traitor. I don't know how much he's involved, but I know he's involved with covering it up. So. Uh, um, I'm not allowed to say that, obviously, because uh, I'm not allowed to acu accuse the government of anything, but the government isn't obligated to produce evidence about a lone wolf terrorist, and even though they're very clearly covering up all this other stuff. And once we start to really get into the government mass shootings that everyone calls a terrorist attack, a famous terrorist attack, that was actually done by a freaking cop. Um, then, then the government really has a lot of problems. So, um, yeah, so, I, I, let's see here. You know, this is more interview with the suspect. Um, okay, so I told him about this guy. He works for Oracle. He's, it, Oracle's tied to Project Oracle, which is CIA. He didn't care. He, he, he okay, he, he said he thought, he thought that I, he was, I, I told him that I thought he was threatening me, blah, blah, blah. This is their side of the story. Um, the part of the story that is missing is the FBI agent who says that my mom told him that I ran away because he came to my house when my mom never mentioned the FBI ever. I just decided to leave. I was like, I'm out of here. So, um, so that's why I'm gonna have to call him in to testify and I'm gonna put him under oath. All right, so here's initial case report. Implied deadly weapon. Yeah, it, it, he, it's implied that I'm gonna kill him. Yeah, that, that really makes sense. Okay, so Jonathan Sharketti is the proving supervisor over James Lamberth. All right, so we need to bring him in. To, I, I need to put him under oath. If I can, I'm gonna try to. All right, so um, I think J James Lamberth is probably gonna end up having some troubles. All right, so this is more about me threatening this guy, um, which I, like, so both parents said that they have been attempting to have John's mental health evaluated for several months. However, he refuses to go. Gary Mormon stated that John doesn't work and has never worked for President Trump or the NSA. Gary Mormon, my dad has dementia, stated that he will attempt to find all the weapons John possesses and remove them from the residence. During the booking process, John Mormon continued to state that he works for the NSA and that his neighbor works for the CIA. John also demanded that I contact an IT person in order to brief them on what the CIA is currently doing. I actually uh, try to tell him my boss's name over and over again. My boss's name is not in the report. Um, I, I, I didn't say my boss's name to the first detective, but to James Lamberth, I repeatedly said my boss's name over and over and over again. So they're acting like I said I worked for the NSA, but I didn't explain like how to prove it. So um, there's nothing further. So, um, but all the evidence has disappeared about me proving it. Cause it's there, cause I'm mentally ill. My father said it, who my dad has dementia. All right, so let's see here. So the DA prelim sheet. Uh, okay, class five felony, standard bond. I tried to get a P bond, the judge said no. Um, I have no criminal history. I have no violent history. So, uh, description of me, this guy, he's white, he's 43. Um, all right, so there's another one. Okay, so, so there's a, le left a handwritten note threatening to kill him, that's what it says. Um, on the thing. All right, which I obviously don't think I said that. Uh, he, Mr. Mitchell stated that the last time he physically talked to Alex Mormon was approximately one year ago when there was a dispute concerning Alex's dog digging up plants. Mr. Mitchell stated that during the, that incident, he and his wife contacted Alex Mormon at his residence. 
Uh, during the contact, Alex appeared irritated but agreed to keep his dog out of the yard. Mr. Mitchell stated that Alex was his, with his parents who were identified as Gary and Mary. No, there's no mention in here that my parents are disabled, both of them, and I take care of them. All right, because there's something wrong with living with your parents and taking care of your parents and choosing not to work for a government that is like actively preventing cybersecurity from happening. Like if you're trying to do cybersecurity, you're in danger. Like you, your, your life will get threatened if you're too good at cybersecurity. So there's no mention of, oh, 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 um, Alex Mormon has too, too much integrity to work for the government, so he chose not to work for the government. He chose to be on the side of cybersecurity because he didn't want to sit there and be a tool, which means being a hacker. He didn't want to be a hacker. He didn't want to be a stalker because Alex isn't a stalker. You're a stalker, apparently. All right, so anyways, let's, let's keep going through this. Alex with his parents, Mr. Mitchell stated, okay, neither he or anyone in his family had contact with Alex Mormon, and they show the footage. He's wearing it, uh, he does on, he's wearing it on July 4th. Um, everyone, I, I can go look it up. I, the problem is I deleted my Twitter, my tweet where I said something, and then, but it was the day before I tweeted about it, because I contacted the FBI, I, I'll have to go look it up when, he was wearing the shirt, but there was no way in hell his kids were outside. He walks out alone. I, I gave a very, it was immediately, it was before he called the police. I gave a description of the event. He walks out alone. He looks at me. He, he fakes like he's drawing a gun. He turns around and like he like crosses his arms to show me, he pauses. And then he walks directly back inside, does nothing else except threatening me. His kids were not outside. I would have known. That he, okay, so he, he doesn't want, he said he wore it on, he said his teenage sons were ro loading up the truck when I threatened him. That he did not see Alex outside during the time frame and the letter was a shock to him. That after reading it, the letter seven times, he was very concerned for his family's safety. Mr. Mr. Mitchell, which I was concerned for like our whole neighborhood's safety. That's why I wrote the letter because I was worried this guy was gonna get into a shootout with me. I mean, why would you threaten someone like that? Are you, are you nuts? But he's, he's never heard of me, and that's what he's going to continue to say, because he's going to lie under oath. Because the cops know one thing. If you lie under oath, how are they going to prove it? All right, so Mr. Mitchell stated that after reading the letter several times, he is very concerned for, about his family's safety. Okay. He's even hesitant to go outside, because he's, he's afraid that I'll kill him. All right, so which is adjacent to the residence. All right, so upon arrival, we contacted him and then asked John what was going on. He explained... Uh, he, yeah, okay, this is another explanation. Kim, she's just someone that notarized it. All right, here's another no. All right, so let's see here. Are the cops suppressing evidence? Yes. And do I have a bunch of evidence now? And, he, and they're going to say this is irrelevant because you can't prove that he works for the CIA. And I'm going to say, yeah, I know. Yeah, that's kind of how it works. All right, so the DA has reviewed the offense and probable cause affidavit. The Colorado rules of professional conduct require the DA use due diligence to ensure that we are aware of all discoverable materials. Okay, cool. Discoverable materials also includes exculpatory, exculpatory information, the information which tends to negate the guilt of the accused or would reduce the level of punishment, and impeachment information which might impact the credibility of a victim or witness. Think, I, I don't have any money to investigate this guy, so I'm completely investigating myself and all the other threats, and those are the ones I can prove. But the problem is I can only prove threats where other people were there, and I, I, I think I've shown some intimidation before I went to jail, I told the FBI about agents hacking my computer as a child because my parents were suspected of drug trafficking and putting uh, horses, getting their cocks sucked by women on there. Hey, Brandon, this is John Alexander Mormon. My mom said you stopped by. Yeah. The FBI, um, bigger still, it's kind of crazy, I think. Like, uh, for example, someone hacked my computer. I'm, I'm a computer guy, so I know, I know when I've been hacked in the past now. I have a degree in in cybersecurity, someone hacked my computer and put horse porn on there. Like when I was like eight, I looked for animal pictures and then horse porn showed up. 
After that, I TiVo'd Rick and Morty, and what showed up was Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and this is the clip that showed up. Yeah, it's me. What did you want me to do a search for? Go out, uh, yeah, go, okay. Give me search for super crime, girls in trouble, and press release. How to? Here's what your search turned up. Sex with animals is no time. All right, so please no notify the office of the DA. Okay, blah, blah, blah. All right, here's this guy. Victim impact statement. Okay, so they enclose. Okay, there there are victims' rights. He will. Yeah. Okay. So this is for him. I don't really care about that. Zip file contents. Okay, that's that's for this. All right. So I have one more thing that we can look at. Okay. Here. Oh, the video. All right. I'll post this online. Um, I'm gonna wait to post his video. Um, until I make sure the cops don't call me because I'm, I'm gonna wait till tomorrow But yeah, this is what it's like you go through it. What have I learned? Um, don't talk to the cops at all like say I will meet you at your office and um, And I want to get a haircut Because if you don't have a haircut, you're gonna look nuts and that's what their whole case is He's got it. He hasn't had a haircut because quarantine and, um, and this guy's trustworthy because he's a salesman for a massive corporation. We trust him, trust me. So, um, yeah, I'm not gonna show the, show, show, show these, show these, but um, yeah, I, I'm still working on all the other evidence. If you wanna see a ton of evidence on TikTok of the threats and stuff like that and all the danger, um, or, if you, or if you wanna see a lot of evidence about that stuff, watch it on TikTok.